We will now hear from Steve Barnes, the Chief Executive of Grocery Aid. Will Steve please come to the rostrum? Thanks all. Um, it's very generous. Uh, I was going to start with good morning, but I'll switch to good afternoon. Um, I'm honoured to be here. Um, I'm not sure Grocery Aid has had the opportunity to speak to this august body before. Um, so, very honoured to be here. I think it might be a first for the organisation, and um, I, I will oblige with what I think will be a very short presentation, and then we can maybe take a few questions if required. Um, a couple of things to start off with. I think the strap line for your meeting over the last couple of days, uh, independent but not alone, is a very apt one for the presentation I want to give. Um, you're not alone. Grocery Aid is there for your colleagues and you in your businesses to support you. And I think it's a superb uh, strap line for the convention. And just to give a little bit of credibility to the organisation, um, our current president's Charles Wilson, and Charles, I'm sure, is known to many of you as Chief Executive Booker for many, many years. And I know Charles is a big supporter, was a big supporter of this organisation, as he is indeed of Grocery Aid. Um, so we've been around for 164 years. Uh, very simple, what do we do? We help colleagues in our trade who are in need, so we help people. And we help people as individuals. Anyone who's brave enough to reach out to a charity for support must really be in need. And we treat them with care, compassion, humility, empathy and skill. And we try and do two things. We try and alleviate the immediate short-term problem that they're facing. So relieve that stress, whatever it might be. They might be a victim of domestic abuse. They might be ill physically or mentally. Or they might be a parent, partner or child who's become ill and means they can no longer work. So they need some help. Um, and then we'll work with the colleague over a longer period of time to put them back on their feet in a sustainable fashion. And we do that on thousands of occasions every year. We are a large trade charity with the biggest benevolent fund operating in the UK. Um, and you'll see the list of sectors in which we help. And I hope you notice that independence and convenience stores are prominent on that list. So this is a charity which you've probably never heard of, which exists for colleagues working in your stores and for you as individuals if you ever need our help and, and hopefully you won't but if you do we'll be there. We work with a long list of companies. Um, Nestle, who I, I know you've just heard from, are one of our largest supporters as are Mars, as are many of the impulse brands that you know well and the big multiple retailers and the wholesalers uh, and the symbol groups as well. So we have a, a huge amount of support. Um, this slide is, is a very simplified version of how we help. Um, our telephone helpline 24-7, 365 days a year, available in over 200 languages. Um, and anybody in your organisation and any immediate family member of individuals working in your stores can use the helpline. It's there. It's free. Um, if you want an employee assistance programme that you don't have to pay for, this is it. Uh, it's a benefit for your staff and it helps in a huge variety of ways and we'll look at that in a minute. Uh, on financial support for individuals, um, we've moved a lot here. Uh, when I joined, you had to have done five years service to qualify for financial support from a charity in the trade. It's now down to six months. It means we're the most accessible benevolent fund in the UK. Um, and you can see the reasons why we support. And uh, at six months, hopefully it's eligible. It makes most of your staff eligible should they fall into need for that support. Uh, the next slide. I'm not going to talk through all of these. Um, if I did, it, it would be a presentation in itself. Um, but I'm very proud of what we call the wheel because it demonstrates a huge variety of ways in which we support your colleagues uh, and yourselves if need be. I'm not going to go through everything. You can see it all there. I'm going to pick out a couple of things that might not be clear from the slide though. So we have a mental health support service for young adults and children called Cooth. Uh, every bit of content and conversation on there is moderated by professionals. Many NHS trusts do offer it, many councils do offer it, but we are the only nationwide uh, provider of Cooth as a service. So again, if you've got young people who are suffering mental trauma, mental health issues, use the service. 
We have Wobot. Uh, we are the only uh, adapters of a smartphone uh, chatbot, chatbot, it's called, which uses artificial intelligence. So effectively, your phone talks to you and coaches you through the day if you're having challenges. We run relate sessions. So anybody who works in our industry who's having family problems can qualify for up to six relate sessions. We are currently running, I think it's 250% up year on year on relate sessions because obviously the pressure that we've been under as a nation and as a trade uh, through COVID uh, has caused many uh, requirements for family counselling. We offer legal advice, step change debt advice. There's a whole series of services on there. One I really wanted to emphasise. Um, now, your sector in particular was why I developed this, and the uptake's not there, and we need to do a better job um, of promoting it. Um, I think it's horrific what you guys have to put up with as a sector um, in terms of the constant shoplifting, the intimidation, the armed robberies, and worse, as we know, uh, I think it's appalling. Um, and I feel very passionate that the contribution you make to the industry, we should be there to support you when things go bad. So the Workplace Critical Incident Support is on the ground trauma counselling for colleagues who've been involved in difficult incidents in store. No, we will send out, wherever you are in the country, a trauma counsellor to work with individuals or teams to help them overcome something difficult that's happened in the workplace, which makes it difficult for them to return to the workplace. And I really, really want word about this to spread. Um, I think it's an important service. We've had tremendous feedback on it. If I'm honest, most of the times it's been deployed thus far have been in factories. You know, traumatic things happen in factories. Um, but it was designed for the independent sector. It was designed for those vulnerable members of our trade who need support when it's not necessarily there through a big blue chip organisation that can stand behind it. But we can do that for this trade and we really, really want to. Um, last year, and me being here today is a direct result of that, uh, we set up something called the Independent Retailer Strategy Group. And the aim of that is to amplify the noise about grocery aid into this sector. Um, so we work with field sales agencies, CPM and Acosta. We work with some of those organisations with great field sales forces, Camelot, um, JTI, Red Bull, Budweiser. So many of you may over time become familiar with grocery aid being in included on sales calls because we just want to keep putting the message out and out again that we're there. Now we've developed a toolkit and a comms programme and by all means get in touch with me or we've got a little table out there, pick up a card or some information and call the office and, and we'll, we'll send you the toolkit. But in the toolkit is a video that Raj Chandarana was very kind, kind enough to uh, do for us. So I think the guys are going to show the film now, very short film. Shorter than I thought. Raj Chandrana here from Tara's London in High Wycombe. About a year ago I stood in this very spot and I was at the lowest of my low. The reason was is from the pandemic and with personal reasons I was putting on a very strong bold face to the community, my staff, my family. Deep down I was, um, I was actually suffering quite a lot which um, some of the industry they know about uh, but I needed somebody else to speak to. Um, I saw an advert for Grocery Aid, very familiar with their work and I thought you know what let me make that phone call. And since then, I've picked myself up and I'm stronger than ever. The reason I'm doing this video is I want to encourage a call to action to other independent retailers. We carry on as if we are robots. We carry on as if we can take the world up on our, sh world up on our shoulders. The truth is, we can't because we're human beings. I strongly urge you, if you are suffering in silence right now to do with absolutely anything, you've got two options. Firstly, call Grocery Aid. They are absolutely fantastic. The second thing, you can always call me. I'm there for you anytime, 24 seven, as our grocery aid. So please make that phone call. It really helped me turn my life around and I'll encourage you to uh, do the same and get some help when you need it. Yeah, I, I knew you'd, you'd listen more to Raj than me droning on, but he's a superstar and you know, I'm so proud that we were able to, to help him. Um, 
Okay, we have to uh, raise money, so we do do some fundraising. If I click on this one, um, I'm not going to talk about our fundraising other than we run huge events and the team put together a selection of these slides and they weren't exactly what I was expecting. Um, but the top left one as you look at it is our barcode festival. So we get four and a half thousand people to that from the industry every year. Um, and that is a very modern and different event which raises a million pounds a year for us. Middle one's golf, a bit old fashioned, but we still seem to sell it out every year. We run specific events for Waitrose and Sainsbury's and we'll be doing so for other multiple retailers. We run cycles. We run the diversity in grocery events. So that's all about diversity and inclusion in grocery, which has become a massive industry movement and we very much sit at the heart of that. So we are active fundraisers. We do spend on uh, welfare over six and a half million pounds a year. We don't have a huge bandwidth in reserves. So we have to be active fundraisers and many companies that supply to you are very generous in their support of a charity. They want the money that we raise to go into this sector to help you guys and your colleagues through crises. So that's it really. I mean, I've been doing this job for five years. Um, I love the job. It's the best job in the industry. Um, I always say it's the only job where no one wants you to fail. And I do have one abiding disappointment though. And it's that any convenience store I ever walk into, um, be it in London or elsewhere, no one knows about the trade charity. You know, that is a disappointment because we exist to support colleagues who need help. And I think together, I'd love to change that. So thank you. I think we've got a couple of questions. I believe this is the way it works on your voting pad. Um, binary questions. You don't have to scan your card uh, for these. So you just literally have to answer. Were you aware of grocery aid before coming here today? So yes or no. Better than I thought. Genuinely better than I thought. So I think the work of the last year has actually helped uh, with that result. But there's still the majority haven't heard of us, which is disappointing because of the role that we have. And the second question, yeah, will you let your colleagues and staff know about the support that's available? Um, obviously, my answer would be please do. And uh, please get in touch with us to get the toolkit to do so. Why? Yeah, I, 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 bet, I, bet I, wish, I bet you all wish all such motions were that easy, um, <laughs> from what I hear. I certainly do. Okay, thank you very much for the presentation. It's been great. Abdul, question for you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, there's lots of uh, charities that uh, people are aware of, but they do not get in touch, and a lot is to do with pride. And uh, especially retailers, you know, they think, you know, they shouldn't be the ones asking for help, but instead they should be contributing. But, you, you know, a lot of people do, sort of, you know, a lot of businesses fail and other things, and people go through a lot of difficult periods. And I'm one who fell into that uh, uh, situation. Uh, I started a new business. Uh, it was picking up nicely and then the pandemic on Boxing Day in Scotland hit and everything was shut down, well, not shut down, but the footfall just died down. Nobody was coming out. And, uh, and I just sort of, the bills were still coming in and uh, I poured every little bit of money. I thought it'll, this lockdown would be over in uh, a few weeks. It carried on. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. We still got things still not fully removed in Scotland. Uh, but um, a few months back, uh, I knew about the Federation Hardship Fund and uh, spoke to some friends and uh, I said I should apply and uh, again the fear was what questions are going to be asked you know how much uh, 
uh, whether it was going to be worthwhile. Uh, but uh, I did uh, take the courage and uh, apply. The application was very simple. Uh, they wanted statements, just downloaded the statements, sent them in, answered a few questions. And uh, within a uh, couple of weeks, got an email. There's a thousand pound coming to you, Abdul. And what a surprise. I mean, what it did was, I mean, I was at the bottom and it just lifted me. It wasn't the amount of money. It was just the mere fact that it was there. You know, the Federation. Okay, thank and you, Abdul. I think, I think the clear message is there that whatever is out there, retailers have an opportunity to take advantage of any grant or any, anything that's out there in grocery aid, obviously, is there as well. So thank you, Abdul. Well, I mean, I, I would really want grocery aid to help out and work together with the hardship fund you know, if people, people do apply. Uh, yeah, I, I think there's um, a synergy there, Stuart. I, I think the Hardship Fund was to set up, help businesses. We help people. Uh, they are two slightly different things, but um, there's a definite synergy there. There's no competition. And the pride thing is, is such a big point. You know, one of my frustrations is you wouldn't believe how many people we help into bankruptcy because it costs £680 to make an individual bankrupt, double that if they're married. Um, and people's pride prevents them coming to us early enough where £500, say six months earlier or a year earlier, that key intervention would have stopped all that debt piling up. So you're right, pride is a massive barrier. I don't know how we overcome it, but I totally agree pride is a barrier to colleagues okay. approaching us. Thank you. Next question. Uh, I'd like to thank Grocery Aid. Uh, one of my staff members lost her daughter, quite a young daughter, and Penny has been with us for a number of years. Um, and Grocery Aid helped her with counselling uh, and all the other charities, our charities, helped her with the funeral. So I'd like to say to all delegates here, please, please use these charities. They are to help our staff members, not just us. So thank you again. Thank you. Gwen, Gwen you've got a speaker down there. Ray Hamilton, uh, Northern Ireland District. Do you cover the island of Ireland? Uh, no. Uh, there is the Irish Grocers Benevolent Fund, the IGBF, that split off many, many years before I started. So we cover Northern Ireland, and we're very active in Northern Ireland, but the Irish Grocers Benevolent Fund cover the rest of Ireland. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, thank you. Uh, final question. Okay. Um, no disrespect to any of the other presentations, but this has been the best presentation I've seen at the conference this year. <clears throat> in 2016, I uh, had an armed robbery. I was attacked with a shotgun, and uh, even though my district and my branch helped me out financially, the psychological was with me for quite a while. And then I had co coronavirus last year, and the local village um, Facebook put on, that don't go to the shop. He's got coronavirus, even though I've done my isolation. My turnover tur went down by 50%. The police and the council came down to shut me down until they saw proof of, of, of that I had done what I was supposed to do. So, you know, could have been with you guys then, but I didn't know about you then. But what I'd like to ask you is, is there, uh, do you have a, a direct debit or a standing order where we can actually put money into? Because I'm more than happy to, to contribute to your, to your company. Well, I mean, that, that, that's an incredibly kind offer. Um, I don't know how to answer this, because I'm quite touched by your offer and, and the suffering you've been through. The reality is, at the moment, we're doing all right on funding. Um, you know, so, it sounds terrible when I say that, well, but we're, do, we're doing all right. We're working very hard. We're making great progress. We've modernized all our events. We've got great traction in the trade. So we're getting great support. Obviously, we'd welcome more, but I, I, I you know, if I've inspired you to support us, that's brilliant. If I've inspired you to reach out to colleagues and fellow independent retailers, um, that's even better. Well, I've got, I've got five employees, I've got four part-time and full-time, but I should definitely be giving them this information. But I was that's just saying, brilliant. if there was, yeah. if you have a bank... Can I bank come in there and I'd say to you this, listen, um, <laughs> you know, they get, they get a lot of help from a lot of big companies where the NFRN actually, their charitable funds, as you know, 
are actually just by us locally and independent. So anybody in this room that wants to uh, set up and, and direct debit or even put money into the Federation's charitable funds, which is obviously helping directly NFRM members, um, I'm sure Peter um, would welcome that. So please, anybody that's just clapped and said I would do that also, um, speak to Peter Wag and see what we can do to do that because that's actually a great way and thank you for that. Uh, thank you for that. But anyway, thank you for the thank presentation. You. Really appreciate it. Round of applause, please.